In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. You see from the green vestments that we have entered ordinary time. This is Tuesday of the first week of ordinary time, and we are celebrating this new season, um, which will only last for a few weeks because we will soon, in early February, be in Lent. So we just have a few weeks of ordinary time, and then we move into the penitential season of Lent. As we prepare to celebrate these mysteries today, let us remember that every prayer and every Mass begins with repentance. So let's look at what we've done wrong. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us. Let's ask the Lord for the grace to do better. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to win our seed for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. It was not the angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. Instead, someone has testified somewhere, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor, subjecting all things under his feet. Is subjecting all things to him, he left nothing not subject to him. Yet at present we do not see all things subject to him. But we do see Jesus crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. For he who for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Response to our psalm is, Alleluia, Alleluia. O Lord our God, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? Alleluia. You have made him little less than the angels, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. Alleluia. All sheep and oxen, yes, even the hearts, yes, even the beats of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the path of the sea. Alleluia. Please stand to honor the gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to Capernaum with his followers, and on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What do you have to do with this, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked them and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We hear in today the openings of Jesus preaching public ministry. And you might wonder as I sometimes wonder, why did the crowds follow him? Why did he become so famous? What was so important about him? Well, leaving the miracles aside, what was in his teaching that people liked or followed? Because you hear them saying twice in today's gospel, he speaks with authority. We've got to listen to this guy. He's not like these, these scribes that we could ignore. He teaches with real authority. Well, okay, okay, you can kind of see why people at that time would follow him. Because I suspect the people at that time were more attuned to God's presence and were more interested in pattering their life after, after what God wanted. But why would anyone today worship Jesus? Now, despite the great falling off that has occurred in our world of worship, 
You could go to any country in the world and find people who worship Jesus. Any country in the world. I don't care what it is. You'll find some people, even if it's just a few, who worship Jesus. Okay? But why do that? Conceptually, there are two problems with following the teaching of Jesus. Let me try to articulate what they are. The first problem is basically, however good Jesus' teaching, he's not us. He's not me. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, in America, at least, we're taught to follow our own desires. In America, only children obey. <laughs> only children are expected to follow any rules. When you get older, you're supposed to find your own rules and set your own life and do, what you're, do your own thing. Because people say, it's my life, right? So however great Jesus' teaching was, it's not my teaching. It's his teaching. Maybe it's good for him. But I set my own rules. I don't obey anybody. Okay? That's the first problem. Jesus' teaching isn't my teaching. Second, what Jesus asks is very, very hard. Okay? He doesn't preach any prosperity gospel or say, if you follow me, you're going to have a life of ease and comfort and, and fame. Just the opposite. Okay? So given just being alive is very hard. Following Jesus on top of that makes your life harder. So since Jesus and his teaching is so hard, he wants us not only to not follow what we want, he wants us to deny ourselves. He wants us to deny our basic teaching, our basic desires, I should say. So given that his teaching isn't what we want, and it's very hard to follow, why would anyone follow him? Well, I think there's a couple reasons for following, several reasons actually for following Jesus. First of all, to put it crudely, Following my desires has not served me well. Okay? Doing what I want throughout my life has put me in the, 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 the ditch. The times when I have most failed is when I followed my own desires. Is that, is that clear? When I'm most myself, I'm most sinful. Okay? Um, and I know many of you watching this are parents. And if you've been a parent, you know that you struggle to teach your children to somehow not be selfish. Every kid starts out, every baby starts out, the world revolves around me. And so parents struggle desperately because they love their children and they want them to have a happy life. They struggle to teach their kids that selfishness is not the best way to live. Okay? And when we get to be adults, though, nobody's telling us that anymore. Okay? So we, we, we revert back to our own desires. Okay? But following my, I'll repeat, following my desires, my own desires, my own best wishes, have not served me well. They've made me fail. Okay, okay so that's one reason that um, you might want to follow Jesus, because following your own desire has crashed you. Okay? It, ha it haven't, hasn't served you well. Okay? And another reason to follow the teaching of Jesus is because it's a higher and better way. That's what the people here in the gospel are hearing. When they hear him speaking with authority and they see the, the demons obeying him and so forth, they realize that his way is God's way, that this is the way that we were meant to be. Okay? And um, that's very important. And if we follow Jesus' way, it's not going to give us pleasure because we're not going to get, remember, we're dying to ourselves and the things that lead us to pleasure, but it is going to lead us to peace and a lot of contentment. So Jesus' way is a higher and better way. And there's a third reason to follow Jesus. He offers the possibility of a happy ending. What do I mean by that? Well, my nieces and nephews are growing old. They're late middle age and they're growing old. They're starting to grow old as, as I am. They're not much younger than I am. And so I'm, it's frustrating to see them repeating all the mistakes of their parents. Okay? They're reaching old age bitter failures. They're, they, of course, they ditch their spouses, they're estranged from their kids, they're living for their pension. That's what everybody that I see, there, even my nieces and nephews, they live for their pension. If there anything happened to their pension, they'd be devastated. Because that's the most important thing in their life now is their pension that they've earned. Because that's what they have to, to, to hold on to when they've lost everything else. And I see them bitter and frustrated, and it makes me bitter and frustrated because I say, why do people have to grow old in such failure? They didn't start off that way. They were that, you know, they, they had a high hopes of success, and even in their own terms, they're failure. So they didn't get to be failures, by the way, by following Jesus. They got to be failures, and they would admit this, I think, by following their own desire. I did what I wanted, and it's, it's turned to ashes. It's turned to ashes. So following Jesus offers the possible, however many mistakes you've made and however many bad things you've done, and even if your life is ashes now, following Jesus offers you the possibility of a happy ending that you can finally make a new start, whatever your mistakes in the past, 
You can be forgiven for what you've done wrong, and you can begin again, and even if it's the very end of your life, and it's, you're on your deathbed and you turn to Jesus, he still offers you the possibility of a happy ending. Okay? And speaking for myself, I want a happy ending to my story. I want to end well. However many mistakes I've made along the line, I want to end up where the fairy tale says they lived happily ever after. That's what I want. And the only way I can get that is through Jesus. He's the only happy ending that I can see. Even for my nieces and nephews and all the failures that, that I see all around me, even the ex-priests and the, all the people that are bitter and estranged from their families and all this kind of stuff, he offers the only possibility that their life could be beautiful, even at the very end. So, Jesus is the author of our story. He is the way and the truth and the life. And he speaks to us with authority because he is the author of our story. The word authority comes from the word author. And he is the author of our story. And the more we follow him, the better chance we're going to have. And the more we reject him and live for our own desires, well, you know what's going to happen then. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and bring our needs before the Father who loves us. Dearest Father, we come before you to worship you and adore you and serve you and love you with all of our hearts. We begin praying first, as always, for the church. We ask you to bless it and strengthen it in faith and holiness. For the church, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our world, for all those who've been hurt by the coronavirus and all those who've died from it. So for all our world and all those hurt by the virus, we pray to the Lord. We've been asked to pray today for the soul of Francisca Uribe. So for Francisca Uribe, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our nation. We ask the Lord to bless it and guide it. For our nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the grace to find God's will and do it, that our life may be successful even if just at the end. So for the grace of finding the Lord's will and doing it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. We thank the Lord for all the kindness he's shown us, all the patience he's shown us, all the times he's put up with us and took us back after we failed. So in thanksgiving for the Lord's forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. And we pause for you to add your own intentions in the silence of your heart. For each of these important needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear them. Father, you've heard our prayers, those we've spoken out loud and those too deep in our heart for words. Dearest Father, grant these prayers that they be, first of all, to your will, and second, to our best interest. And we ask these things as we ask all things, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sinfulness. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For though you have no need of our praise... Yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willing into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. If there's someone with you at home, please offer them a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with these sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for the Lord's blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you all the days of your life. Amen. Our Mass of this Tuesday of the first week of Ordinary Time is ended. But let us go in peace to live the Mass and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Enjoy your afternoon.